Well, I, I think time will tell. I, I think our medical people expect Nigel to play. Okay. You know, it's probably comparable to what Kamu did to his thumb a few weeks back. And, and I think over, you know, getting over the initial pain, I think they cast it and, and uh, they find a way to protect it so that he can play. So uh, unless I get a different report, my uh, expectation is, is that he will play. How difficult is that for a linebacker to not have a thumb? <laughs> well, I would say this. Um, it, it, it gets tough because, you know, when, particularly on uh, tackles, it's hard to grab cloth and wrap up. You guys probably saw in the, in the Dallas game, you know, Kamu had a chance. Uh, them coming out had a chance for an interception. I would have thought maybe if he had two good hands and not one casted that maybe he would have made that play. Um, so there's some challenges to it. It's, it's not insurmountable. We've seen a lot of people play with them and they've played well, but there's certainly limitations as far as grabbing things and that type of thing. So, How was he able to, he said he injured it early in last game. I mean, what were your conversations with him? How was he able to kind of get through that game without uh, coming out with that injury? Well, it was, you know, I, you know, I didn't know it had happened. And then I see him on the sidelines. We're just going over some adjustments. And the hand's swollen. He can't get it inside his glove. And uh, so then I kind of had an idea that he had done something to it. One thing about Nigel is, and you guys have probably seen him here for the last three years, he's, he's a pretty tough nut and uh, pretty competitive. And he didn't want to come out of the ball game. He wanted to continue to play, even though I'm sure there was tremendous discomfort with that thing. But uh, that's a big credit to him. Um, you know, Jim addressed that this morning with our team. You know, guys like him and, and uh, Michael Bennett, you know, had a foot issue. I don't know exactly what that was, but Mike went back into the game. Uh, I would say this, there's probably been players on other teams that could have could have said, well, you know what, I'll just sit this one out. I'm a little bit dinged up. But those guys went back in the ball game and battled, so uh, certainly a credit to them. Do you have to change anything with scheme or technique when something like that happens? At, at no, nah, because you know what, if you do that, then you put other 10 other guys off balance, and that's not the idea. I think you just have to uh, try to coach through what, you know, what they are, and, and you just let it roll, and, and you go on. So, Outside of the injury, he said there was some rust early on in terms of being the signal caller. He did something he hadn't done this year. What kind of an adjustment was that, and how did you see him progress as the game went on? Well, he, you know, I, I'd say it's like a fish taken to water. I think once he got in there and started realizing all the things that he had to do, uh, you know, he gravitated and did a good job. You know, uh, I sh I'm sure there was a comfort level when Jordan was in there to let Jordan make all the adjustments and make all the calls verbally, and then now all of a sudden it fell to him. So, uh, but you know, he reacts well to it. And, and again, last year, you know, he. He did it, and uh, he actually did it in the Washington game when Jordan Hicks got hurt and, and did a good job. So um, I'll expect him to continue to uh, flourish in that role.